What's up? You got your boy Direct, aka Native Shades, reminding you to like and subscribe. Cause today we're gonna be talking about the Casio SK1 keyboard. What had happened was so the year is 1985. And Saturday morning cartoons is everything for kids. You have Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Muppet Babies, the Smurfs, the Littles, Inspector Gadget, Dennis the Menace. Kids were in heaven with cartoons. And man, talk about the dope commercials. Like, do y'all remember this? Whatever it is, I think I see becomes a tootsie roll to me <laughs> or we are flintstone kids a million strong and growing <laughs> or does anyone particularly from new york please tell me if you remember this commercial i'm really glad they made the children's aid society <laughs> Like, for real. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but in 1985, that commercial was the ish. <laughs> and amongst all these fly commercials, there was one commercial that always seemed to stand out. And that was from a company called Casio. Yeah, Casio, known for watches and swatch watches and all that, would have a commercial where a kid will be in his bedroom or in the living room and that kid will just look like if he's having the time of his life. <laughs> and why you might ask? Because that kid is playing music with a mini keyboard. Now in 1979, Casio wanted a change. They wanted a change in the company. They wanted to beef up their research and development squad so that when the 80s came in, they were good to go. And when 1980 hit, Casio put out their first keyboard, the Casio Tone 201 electric keyboard. You had 29 sounds. You could play eight notes at the same time. They also released their first solar powered calculator. Wow, I can use this calculator without batteries. It's powered by the sun. <laughs> they came out with an electric dictionary. Wow, I don't need Webster's anymore. And in 1983, they released the DW5000, their first G-Shock watch. Unbelievable. It was rumored that with this G-Shock watch, you could just throw it off a roof of a building and it won't break. Amazing. But there was one department that they looked at. They looked at the kids department and something was missing. Not only for kids, but for adults too. Something was missing in music production. And Casio, being the innovators that they are, decided to fill that void. And in 1985, Casio released their SK-1 keyboard. You're getting 32 mini keys, for voice polyphony. You're getting an additive synthesis section that allows you to use five PCM tones, piano, brass ensemble, trumpet, synth drums, and human voice. You're also getting three synth tones, flute, pipe organ, and jazz organ. You're getting an 8-bit 9.38 kilohertz sampler in this joint. You're also getting, count it, 1.4 seconds of sample time. <laughs> Can you imagine how much you could do with 1.4 seconds? You're getting a loop feature. You're getting 11 drum patterns. Disco, rock, pop, march, samba, rumba, four beat, swing, slow rock, waltz. And we can't forget the infamous pattern everyone always wants. And that's Bossa Nova. <laughs> Casio got it. They got it right this time. Casio was on a roll. 
They sold millions of their G-Shock watch, millions of their calculators, and now they were selling a ton of these mini keyboards. Think about it, the SK-1 was the perfect gift. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were a parent in the 1980s and you, you just didn't have time to keep up with all the toys the kids wanted from G.I. Joes to Gem to Transformers, when Christmas or their birthday came around, you didn't have to pull your hair out thinking about, what am I gonna get little Daniel? <laughs> you know what you brought him? You brought him a Casio SK-1 keyboard, the perfect gift. And, and little Daniel was happy. At Christmas, when he opened up the package and saw that Casio, man, he was smiling from ear to ear. You couldn't stop Daniel from playing that all throughout the night. Until it got real late, Daniel would go to his room, put the Casio SK-1 mini keyboard on his dresser and never touch it again for the rest of his life. <laughs> That was usually the scenario with the SK-1 keyboard. People, even the kids looked at it as a toy that was like in one day, out the other. It was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm playing the keyboard. I'm, I'm playing all these little cute sounds, but I'm not really learning anything. I, you know, the sounds is kind of cheesy after a while. And, you know, I, I want to play with uh, my Trypticon. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to play with this thing anymore. You know what I'm saying? And they never used it again. But for the three kids that did continue to use it, they cracked the code. <laughs> the code of what, you ask? The code of music production. I hope you know these Casio SK-1 keyboards, even though they was really miniature in size, they were pretty advanced production pieces of the day. For instance, it had a chord mode that would play the rhythm and allow you to change the rhythm based on the key you select with the type of scale on top of the key, meaning like you might select the C key and on top of it, it'll say, minor so all of a sudden the rhythm will change to a minor scale or a major seventh scale on the d key and all of a sudden the rhythm will change to a major seventh scale this is pretty dope this keyboard for the money wasn't a bad sampler it had tracks in it sort of you know it wasn't really labeled tracks but their solo one solo two and chord mode were kind of like tracks you could record them independently and then in replay, the keyboard will mix it together and you can mix your song. That's pretty impressive. This keyboard even had envelopes. You had 13 envelopes labeled on top of certain keys. And if you selected them and played your keys, all of a sudden you'd get a delay effect or some kind of sustain effect. This thing was a synthesizer. Casio really surprised folks with the amount of features they put into this little guy in 1985. It, it shocked folks. It, it, it's like, you know, you're in the 80s and you're trying to dress cool for the culture. You know what I'm saying? You got your Benettons and you might have your Lee jeans all ripped up for some reason because you wanted to play tackle football in the street. But you know, you go to the local store where you buy all the gear that you like and you see polo, you see an Adidas sweatsuit, a Nike sweatsuit, and you know, they got the mannequins there and you're like, okay, this seems cool. Um, You're checking out some of the outfits. You know, this mannequin got a hat. This mannequin got a chain. So one of the mannequins has a pair of shades you saw before. So you, you know, you walk up to the mannequin and you're looking at it and you touch the shades and right before you pull it off, it moves. <laughs> it starts talking to you like, hey, what's up, Reggie? What's going on? You're like, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, <laughs> Kev, is that you? He's like, yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, man. Whoa, you, 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 you got so many brand names on you. I thought the mannequin was moving. <laughs> That's how surprising the features on the Casio SK-1 keyboard was at this time. <laughs> 
So the workflow with a Casio SK-1 keyboard is real easy. All you have to do is move the first switch down to record and play a melody. That's it. <laughs> After you finish playing your melody on the keys, move that switch back up to play, press the auto play button, and then it'll play back the melody you just played. And it also has a one key play button where every time you press either of the buttons, it will play the note you just played. So this allows you to really quickly just play your melody real fast or real slow. You know what I'm saying? This was a dope keyboard. So when the Casio SK-1 came out, it was about $90. <laughs> it was really affordable. That, that's why a lot of parents brought it for the kids. It was a no brainer as, you know, just a quick gift for, for the kids to enjoy. But who would have knew that for some folks, this was their gateway drug into music production. You had legendary producers like Marley Marr using the Casio SK-1 keyboard on some of his early songs with MC Shan and Roxanne Shante. You had producers like Large Professor that said, using the Casio SK-1 keyboard in the mid 80s is what helped him crack the code of music production. You know, just the whole philosophy of sampling something and uh, it being pitched up on the keys, allowing you to play different tones and sounds on the fly, or just the understanding of how you could flip the demo song, like in a MIDI way where, it, you know, the song will play a pattern. And if you press bossa nova or samba or something, all of a sudden the sound will switch. The pattern will remain the same, but the sound will just switch. This helped him crack the code of understanding bigger production equipment. The Casio SK-1 is still regarded as one of those affordable pieces that still today finds itself on folks' lo-fi records and their classic pops and their classic rock and hip hop records. For some reason, this thing just never goes away. <laughs> And the SK-1 really helped set the standard of what a mini keyboard should be. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's the Casio SK-1 keyboard. What had happened was... So this is your boy, Direct, AKA Native Shades, reminding you to go down low in the description and get that free Synth City sound library remember what they always say the best city in the world is a synth city so this is your boy direct aka native shades reminding you to like and subscribe and i'm signing off